All right, what I want everyone to do is read the captions here because this is comedian Nato Green, and what he is going to do is put succinctly and perfectly the hypocritical argument of, well, I don't like that you talk about politics, Nato Green. Why do you always have to talk about politics? And then he quite literally lists all of the reasons why it is important to talk about politics. Because the levers of control that lobbyists, billionaires, the top 1% enact through what we like to call here legalized bribery of politicians to carry out and how it affects everybody and every single thing. I was in line in a taqueria in the Mission District, and I was behind some dudes, and one of the dudes says to the other dude, uh, you know, San Francisco has good food, not good barbecue. Like, there's good fancy barbecue, but there's not good gritty, authentic down-home barbecue. And I was like, all right. Tap, 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 tap. And they said, yes. And I said, how long have you lived here? And they said, three years. And I said, let me tell you something. I've lived here my whole life. And San Francisco used to have good barbecue. Yes, it did. There used to be Big Nate's in South America, owned by Nate Thurman, the basketball player. There was Leon's out on Slope, where you could take your shit to the beach. There was uh, Cliff's on Old Bayshore, where you get ribs and shrimp. There's a place on San Bruno Avenue called Johnson's. They had a thermometer on the wall for how hot the sauce was. There was brother-in-law's at the Visadero uh, that had great sauce. Uh, there was a place on 3rd Street called Moselle's that had amazing oxtails and it was only open on Wednesdays from 3 to 3.15. <laughs> and they'd only serve you if you went in with a black lady in a church hat. <laughs> there was a place on Fillmore called Pitman's Pit that had a painting on the window that said, eat your ass off with a picture of a pimp crying into a plate of ribs. <laughs> Yes, there used to be good barbecue in San Francisco, but you know what happened? The San Francisco black population went from 12% to 3%, and you see when you destroy a community, you lose the institutions that that community sustains. Maybe there's not good barbecue in San Francisco because people like you destroyed the black community. And they said, oh, we just wanted some more chata. And when I say this dude is must-see, I mean he is must C. I support the conditions that the Marsh is proposing. I'm trying to get these people to be a good neighbor uh, as they move into the neighborhood. Um, you know, San Francisco has been a welcoming place for generations of artists to move to, going back at least to the 50s. Uh, that should continue. No one, you know, the city genuflects before the opera and baseball. No one likes opera. Uh, Seriously, people people like being able to afford to be seen at the opera. Uh, no one likes baseball. People like winners. But we are making art for losers by losers. And we need a place in this city. Uh, we don't have riots or cause traffic jams or, uh, or beat up Dodger fans. We cry in our beer and have regrettable sex with baristas like we're supposed to. And we need some, some respect and some uh, uh, recognition. If you need a, just, a sequel justification, to mitigate this project, I think there are significant, uh, unmitigated, cumulative impacts of bringing so many new ass into the neighborhood, and I think the city needs to look at that. So, uh, thank you very much. I'm Nato Green. He's also well established, ballsily, if that's even a word, speaking in front of the board. Well done. Before we get into it, if you can, please check out Nato Green on YouTube, on his TikTok page. And, of course, his website, which you could find at natogreen.com. I'm going to piggyback off what NATO said. And it is in the first video. With everything that we know and how our institutions in government do not look out for us, look at the way that corporations are raking in record profits, in a COVID world, and they will cite inflation, though inflation is going down. Think about how they do it. And think about all of the chemicals and the ingredients that they put into our food, which are banned in many European countries because it is a health risk. Think about the way that, as I learned recently, that those who make baby formula and give off a vibe that they truly care 
about pregnant mothers and expecting parents and just parents overall lobbied and fought tooth and nail for parents to not get paid leave because it'll have a trickle down of, well, they need to go to the office and the mom can't pump. So formula, we benefit. Think about how we are doing nothing for climate change, nothing because of lobbying. And we've even seen this from Channel 4 News. I played the clip many times where a lobbyist believes he's talking to someone that is not a journalist when they are, and they go over how Joe Manchin is the kingmaker and how they make these deals and how they get done and how, oh, we're really fighting to get to get our emissions lowered and we have a project, blah, blah, blah. Proge project Green, please believe us that we're trying to do everything in order to put out a positive PR-driven image that they care about climate change when they don't. Think about how the oceans are contaminated. Think about how our water is contaminated. All of these things that he listed. And yet, just because it comes down to someone having and holding these opinions on not even radical change in the slightest, more so change that should be mandatory and is indicative of the voters having a say for a better life. Apparently that is taboo. Apparently that is a huge no-no for many others in society because it makes them uncomfortable. Why? Why does it make you so uncomfortable to talk about? Why does it make you uncomfortable to fight for unions? Why does it make you uncomfortable to fight for this? Why does it make you uncomfortable to stick up for the marginalized? Why does it make you uncomfortable to say, hey, you know what I would really like? High-speed railway. You know what I think would be great? Healthcare. But that's uncomfortable for a lot of people because they just don't want to talk about politics. That's all that it has to essentially be and have the mind lead to is this is a political discussion. I don't want to talk about politics. I want to reserve the sanctity of a friendship. Everyone is entitled to that. But considering the amount of control that they have, wouldn't you want to have a say? If there are any stories we missed, if there are any that you, the viewer, would like to submit, get at me and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. DMs are open. Support the channel. All of our content is free. It's the least you could do. Become a paid channel member and or go to tyt.com join to support the network as a whole. Thank you so much. Have a great day.